And welcome to our worship on this, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Just a few quick announcements. Uh, a reminder that this uh, August the 22nd at 6 p.m., there's a new member orientation. Uh, all the people who are interested in joining the church, uh, please turn out that the evening. Uh, There'll be people here to give you an orientation on what all we do here at Redeemer. And if you're an old member, if you'd like to just come out and meet some of the new people, please come out on uh, August 22nd at 6, 6 p.m. Ask for special prayers today for the people of Maui. A horrible disaster going on there. Uh, the men's group are still selling Boston butts. Uh, you, there's a table outside. If you haven't bought them, please come out and buy all the Boston butts. The, the uh, proceeds go to... The church, uh, they will be used in various ways. The men's group will meet and look at the various needs of the church and decide how the money will be distributed. If you have not picked up your platter from Rally Day, they're in the back. Please pick them up. Don't forget that today is Second Sunday Brunch. Uh, Chef Debbie is in the kitchen right now fixing us a wonderful brunch, so please stay for the Second Sunday Brunch. There are sign-up sheets in the narthex for worship assistance and hospitality table. We always need... Uh, people to do worship assistance, and we also need people to sign up and volunteer to, to man the hospitality table. The men's group meets 6.30 Monday at Cancun, so all the guys here, new and old, please show up. Excuse me, can I jump in just a second? I believe the new uh, member orientation is on August 22nd, a Wednesday, and August 15th is going to be the church council. At 6 at p.m., yes. 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 I invite I you to stand, stand as we stand enter into worship. worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us now confess our sin to God, who is faithful and just, who has, who has promised, promised to forgive, to forgive our, sin our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most, Most merciful God, God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We, we confess, confess to you, you that we, we have sinned against you in thought, thought word, and, and deed, by what, by what we, we have, have done, done, and by, and by what, what we have we left undone. undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy, I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy and abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray the prayer of the day together. O oh God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading today is from the 19th chapter of 1 Kings. At Horeb, at Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every, every mouth, mouth that has that not has kissed not him. him. The, the word, word of the of Lord. The Lord. Uh, we'll read uh, uh, verses, verses 8 through 13, 13 from, from Psalm 35. 35. We'll read responsively. 
I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and those who turn their hearts to you. Your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our Steadfast Steadfast love and faithfulness have met met together. together. Righteousness and peace peace have kissed each other. The Lord will will indeed indeed grant grant prosperity, prosperity, and our our land will will yield its increase. increase. Righteousness Righteousness shall go before before the Lord Lord and shall shall prepare prepare for God God a pathway. The second second reading reading comes from the the 10th chapter chapter of Romans. Romans. Moses Moses writes writes concerning the righteousness that that comes from the law, that the the person person who does does these things things will live by them. them. But the righteousness that that comes comes from from faith faith says, do not not say in your your heart heart who will ascend ascend into heaven, heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ Christ up from from the dead. dead. But what what does it say? say? The word word is near near you, on your your lips and in your heart. heart. That That is is the word of faith faith that we proclaim. proclaim. Because Because if if you confess confess with your lips lips that Jesus Jesus is Lord Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. saved. The scripture scripture says, says, no one who believes in him will be put put to shame, shame, for there is no no distinction distinction between Jew and Greek. Greek. The same same Lord Lord is Lord of all and is generous generous to all who call on him. For everyone everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Lord shall be saved. saved. But how how are they they to call call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom whom they they have have never heard? heard. And how are they they to hear hear without without someone to proclaim him? And how are they they to proclaim proclaim unless unless they are are sent? sent. As it is written, written, how beautiful beautiful are the feet feet of those who bring bring good news. news. The word of the the Lord. Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus immediately made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, it is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got got out of the boat, boat, started started walking walking on the water, water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed noticed the strong wind, wind, he became frightened, frightened, and beginning beginning to sink, sink, he cried out, out, Lord, save me. Jesus Jesus immediately reached reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly you are the Son of God. This is the gospel gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated seated and the children children and young at heart may come forward. (laughs) That's why I cheat. 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There's a lot there's of fear, a lot of fear in our readings this morning, right? right? right. But, there's but there's also, also our psalm, 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 which talks a lot about, about peace. peace. What do you what think, do you of, think when of when you hear, when you hear peace? peace? What does it, what does mean, it mean to you to, to have, have peace? peace? Do you know what peace means? Do you know what peace means? A nap. Serenity. Calm. No worries. You, you, you know, you know um, the Lion King, Hakuna Matata? Peace. No worries. Right? Um, so what does God's peace look like? It, it looks like no conflict. It looks like nothing to worry about. It looks like faithfulness rising and righteousness coming down and everybody coming together and everybody working for one cause, which is God's mission. The lion and the lamb, the lion and the sheep. People, animals, everyone coming together. Nothing to be afraid of, nothing to worry about. Is life actually like that? Not yet. Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Good, Good answer. answer. It will, it be, will be one day, one day. but in the meantime, we still we have fear, fear. And we and still we get into, get into situations, situations that cause us cause great, great alarm. alarm. The, people the people in Maui, in Maui my, heart my heart breaks, breaks for. for. The, people the people standing in, in chest-high chest ocean, ocean for hours waiting to be rescued because there was no non-burning place on the land. That is fear. That is fear. And yet, in the midst of that, God is there. And we and can, we can turn, turn to him and say, and say Lord, Lord, show us show your us peace. Your so let's so pray. pray. Good and gracious God, God, you know that we do have hearts that become afraid. afraid. You know that you we know do that we fear what we can't what control, control and what we don't, don't understand. understand. But you but also you know, know that, that, that um, you, have you have called us and, and we have responded. So help us to feel your peace in the midst of whatever comes. Help us help to us see to your see righteousness, righteousness and faithfulness and meeting and kissing and all around us. us. And help and us help to us spread that peace that to peace others. others. It's in your most in your holy most name that we pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, well, oh, well done. done. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, and from the Holy Spirit, our advocate and guide. Amen. We actually have an embarrassment of riches in our readings this morning, and there could easily have been a sermon done on any one of them. I love the reading from 1 King, and its beautiful and unique theophany, or God appearance that reminds us that God shows up whenever and however he chooses. Sometimes in a noisy and attention-grabbing display of power, and sometimes in the sound of sheer silence that follows such a display. This is certainly worth taking a closer look at. And yet, there is another theophany that I want to focus on today, and that one comes in our gospel reading. This story, this story happens, happens right, after right after the feeding, the feeding of the 5,000, which, which was the assigned, assigned reading for reading last, last Sunday. Sunday. Of course, of we course, didn't we read didn't that read one because it was because Rally Day, and, and all of our readings focused on let letting, our, letting light our light shine. shine. So we need to so back, need to back up, up just, just a little bit and remind ourselves that Jesus had wanted to go to a quiet place after hearing about the death of John the Baptist. But the, but the people figured out, figured out where, he, where was he was going and raced, and raced there and got there, there ahead, ahead of him and met, and him, met him when he arrived in the wilderness. In the wilderness. And, despite and despite the fact the that fact they were there, there and, that and that meant that his meant own that his needs own were not were going, going to be going met, met, at least immediately, immediately. Jesus showed Jesus compassion showed for the crowds and miraculously, and miraculously turned a small amount of food into an ample meal for all of them. Now, however, now, however Jesus, Jesus is still, is still seeking, seeking some time, some time alone. alone. So he sends, so he his, sends disciples his disciples on their, on their way, way, back across, across the Sea of Galilee, Galilee without him, without him. Dismisses, dismisses the crowds the crowd himself, 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 and then, and then finally, finally goes up, goes up the, mountain the mountain to pray. To pray. 
It is interesting that he goes from the wilderness to the mountain and then back to the sea, as each of these locations is symbolically important, especially in Matthew's Gospel. The wilderness, we know, is the place of temptation, which Jesus experienced immediately following his baptism. And it is also the place of wandering when we are lost, as the Hebrew people experienced during the Exodus. The mountain is typically the place where God is encountered, as Moses did on Mount Sinai and Elijah did in our first reading this morning. So when Jesus goes to the mountain to pray, we can safely assume that he will encounter God, his Father, there as well. And then following his time of prayer, he goes to the sea, which brings us back to the creation story where God, where God separates, separates and contains, and contains the, waters the waters of chaos. Of chaos. And we see, and how, we very see how very fitting, fitting this, this reference, reference is here, here, here. As, Jesus as Jesus is dealing, is dealing with, chaos. with chaos, the chaos, the chaos of, the of the devastating news of John the Baptist's, John the Baptist's death, 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 and the chaos, and the chaos of the crowds of the crowd, that were so, were so intent, intent on following, following him. him. But Jesus, but Jesus is not the is only one who will deal with the symbolic chaos of the sea. For his disciples disciples were already already facing the chaotic chaotic waters waters themselves. themselves. Some of them had been been called from lives as fishermen, fishermen, so we might expect expect them to handle this as a matter of course. course. And yet, yet, this particular particular journey journey across across the sea sea seems to have been been quite a struggle struggle for them. them. As the Greek Greek says that the winds winds were not only against them, they were tormenting them. And now we are told that it is in the fourth watch, which would put it somewhere between between three o'clock and six o'clock in the morning. And they have not yet yet made it it to the other shore. shore. They must have been exhausted exhausted. from receiving the news about John the Baptist, Baptist. from having having been met and and having to feed so many people, people, and then having having to struggle against the wind and the waves for so long. And it is when they are in this this exhausted exhausted and stressed stressed state state that they see see what they they think think must be a ghost ghost, walking across across the water water toward them. them. Can you imagine imagine their fear? fear? We all know know that it is not not normal normal to see someone walking walking on water, water, let alone alone the rough, rough, choppy waters waters that they they had been fighting. So the disciples, disciples quite naturally, naturally, it turns out, assumed that they had to be dealing with a spirit or a ghost of some kind, and they were terrified. terrified. Blogger David David Ewart writes that it is important to know that at the time of Jesus, Jesus, what happens happens in this story story is not not that Jesus Jesus walks on water. water. Jesus Jesus walks walks on the sea. sea. And the sea sea was understood to be a living, chaotic, potentially deadly spirit. When the disciples disciples see Jesus Jesus walking walking on the sea, sea, they are not relieved. relieved. They do not shout for joy, joy, expecting that Jesus has come to rescue them from the storm, storm, also caused caused by spirits. spirits. Instead, Instead, they are terrified. terrified. The word used here for terrified can also be used to describe a sea that has been agitated and stirred up. In other words, the disciples' inner state is now a perfect reflection of their outer circumstances. They are terrified terrified because they realize realize that they are seeing with their their human human eyes events events that can can only happen happen in the realm realm of the spirits. spirits. Their first first reaction reaction is that they are seeing a ghost. ghost. They are terrified terrified because while spirits spirits are everywhere everywhere in the human realm, realm, it is deadly deadly for humans humans to be in the realm realm of the spirits. And here we have the theophany. Jesus is walking on the sea, physically reenacting the taming of the waters of chaos, something only God is capable of doing. And this would have been terrifying to anyone, including any of us who saw it. Jesus understood understood this, this. so he immediately spoke spoke to his disciples disciples saying, take heart, heart, it is I, do not be afraid. afraid. Or, Or, in a more literal literal translation, translation, which I like better, 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 Jesus said, said, be of good courage, courage. I am, am. do not be afraid. afraid. Here we have the divine divine name sandwiched sandwiched between exhortations to have courage and not be afraid. 
This command, this command to, fear to fear not, not is, heard not, is heard several, several times, times throughout the Gospels, Gospels when people, when people are, are encountering, encountering the divine. The divine. Do not, Do not be, afraid be afraid is a word, is a word of divine, divine assurance in the midst, in the midst of, danger of danger or fear, or fear. when there when is there cause for people, for people to be afraid. To be afraid. And, yet, and yet, I am I never am sure never how reassuring, how reassuring those, those words would actually be. Actually be. For it is still the case case that what they were were seeing was in complete conflict conflict with what they had had always understood understood to be true about about the way the world world worked. worked. People People just just don't don't walk walk on water. water. Of course, they had had just seen Jesus Jesus break the bounds of what was humanly humanly possible possible by feeding feeding thousands thousands with five loaves and two fishes. So perhaps perhaps one more more example of Jesus Jesus doing the seemingly impossible impossible should not have been quite so startling for them at this point. But I can see see how it was. was. Peter, 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 at least, least, seemed seemed more curious curious than afraid afraid, as he said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. water. Notice, though, that Jesus had just just definitively definitively said, said, I am. am. And now Peter Peter says, says, if it it is is you. you. Thus, Peter was apparently not quite convinced that it was actually Jesus. And he and issued he a challenge for Jesus to prove his identity. identity. Notice the Notice similarity the here to what the devil had done during the temptation in the wilderness. In the wilderness. As he as had he said, said, if you if are the are son of God, God. Command, the command the stone to become, to become a loaf of bread. bread. And, and if you if are you the are son of God, God, throw, throw yourself, yourself down, down from down here. Jesus had refused refused to act on those temptations temptations to prove his identity, identity. yet here here, he does does as Peter Peter demands, demands, commanding commanding Peter to come to him him on the water. water. And Peter, Peter, being Peter, Peter, rash, rash, impetuous impetuous Peter, 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 stepped stepped out of the boat boat, and started walking walking toward Jesus. Jesus. Professor Matthew Matthew Skinner Skinner asks, asks, why would Peter Peter want to go out there? After all, Jesus Jesus himself is not exactly exactly respecting the natural natural boundaries boundaries everyone is used to. to. There's something something scary scary about that, that too. too. I doubt Peter Peter expects a walk on the the sea will alleviate alleviate all his fears. fears. Rather, Rather, his his desire to join Jesus Jesus on the water water expresses a desire for transcendence. He's not trying to be Jesus. He's trying to be with him. Peter wants to share Jesus' unbounded place to put put himself himself beyond the forces and expectations expectations that determine our usual existence, existence, whether for better better or for worse. worse. I'm not sure about about Peter's Peter's motivation motivation for stepping out of the boat. boat. Does he really want Jesus to prove his identity? identity? Or does he want to do something something superhuman himself? himself? Or does he he want to go to Jesus rather than waiting for him to get to the boat? As far as I can tell, it could be any of these or maybe maybe all of them in some some combination. combination. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, when Jesus Jesus tells him to come, come, Peter Peter steps out of the boat. But But then then the wind wind catches Peter's Peter's attention and he begins begins to sink. sink, sink, sink. So he calls calls again to Jesus Jesus saying, saying, Lord, Lord, save me. me. This time time there is no doubt of Jesus' identity. He does not say again, if it is you, would you please save me? He says, Lord, Lord, save me. me. And Jesus Jesus instantly instantly reaches reaches out his hand hand and takes takes hold of him. him. So what are we to make of this story? story. We have probably probably all heard heard those sermons sermons about Peter Peter stepping out of the boat in faith faith, and then failing failing in his attempt to walk on the water because he lost his concentration and took his eyes off of Jesus. Point of those sermons is keep your eyes on the Lord. But I think that this story is more about Jesus and who he he is is, than what Peter Peter was attempting attempting to do. After all, making this story all about about Peter and his failure to stay focused focused actually actually takes takes our focus off of Jesus. Jesus. And the truth truth is that the Gospels Gospels were not written to tell the story of the disciples, disciples. although we do learn from their example and their failings. But they were written to tell us the truth about Jesus. And Jesus Jesus does more than just invite invite Peter out of the boat boat here. He comes comes to all of the disciples in their struggles, struggles, walking on the waters of chaos chaos to do so, so. and then then saves Peter Peter instantly instantly when he falters. falters. And as as Professor Mark Mark Vitalis Vitalis Hoffman Hoffman points out, out, when they get back in the boat, the other disciples don't congratulate Peter for doing pretty well and wish him better luck next time. 
The real the hero, real hero in, the in the story is Jesus, Jesus whom, the whom the disciples worship for the first, for the first time, time in Matthew, in Matthew as, the as the Son of God. Son of God. This, all this all seems, seems to be, to be much, more much more important than, important than Peter's than brief, brief adventure, adventure upon, upon the waves. waves. Here we have Here a story, we have story of our Lord and Savior Lord and doing Savior for us that which we cannot, cannot do for ourselves. For ourselves. Although, we Although we often do like, do like to think we are self-sufficient self and try to do things on our own. own. But isn't that, isn't the, point? that the point? We are, we incapable, are incapable of saving, of saving ourselves, ourselves or even or staying even focused on Jesus, Jesus no matter no how matter hard, hard we try. And yet and he yet is he always there always for us and with us, sending us out, sometimes into the waters of chaos, yet remaining, yet remaining ever, ready ever ready to catch us, to catch us when we when falter. We falter. Pastor Brian, Brian Stoffregan reminds us that we are sitting in the nave of this building, of this building. A, word a, word a word whose origins, origins come from the Latin, Latin navis, navis, which means, uh, which boat, means boat or ship. Or ship. The, ship the ship we are in was in not was intended, intended to stay tied, tied up to the dock, to the dock. But we were also we were not also meant not to leave, leave the, safety the safety of this of ship, ship until we until have reached we have our reached intended our next intended destination. destination. We have to we set have to sail, sail and remain and on board, board to get to the get other to the side, other where, side where, where Jesus is sending, is sending us. Sending us. Just, as Just as Jesus sent, sent his disciples on ahead to get to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, so he sends us. Paul takes up this expectation in his letter to the Romans that we read this morning. There, though, there he though teaches, he teaches not, through not through command, command but, through, but through, questions. through questions, writing, everyone who, everyone who calls, calls on the name of the Lord, Lord shall be saved. saved. But, how but how are they to are call they on one in whom they have not believed? Not believed. And, how and how are they to are believe, they believe in one of whom they have whom never, they have heard? never heard? heard? And how and are they to hear, they hear without, without someone, someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? These questions, These questions build in both intensity and, intensity and focus, and we are to we see are ourselves in the role, in the role of the one, the one they are describing. They are describing. We, are the we are the ones who have come, who have come to know the Lord, the Lord. and we are and the we ones, are the ones who, are who are called to proclaim him to those who do not, not yet, yet know, him. know him. So we come so we together, come together yeah. to worship our Lord and to be nourished at his table so that we can then be sent out, strengthened and fortified to share, to share our faith, our faith with, with others, with others. Knowing, knowing that the Lord, the Lord is already, is already there, there with them. With them. With them. Our job our is job not is to bring people, people to faith. faith. Only, God Only God can do that. Can do that. And, our and our job is not is to meet not some sales, sales quota of new believers. Of new believers. Our, job our job is simply and always, always to speak the truth of God's love so that others can come to see how God is already working in the world and in them in sometimes, sometimes mysterious, mysterious and unfathomable, and unfathomable ways. ways. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Amen. Amen.
With the whole church, let us now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of grace, your faithfulness is never ending, and your righteousness becomes ours through Christ Jesus. Send the church to proclaim the gospel both near and far, in church buildings and in our neighborhoods, in person and through digital means. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, the plants and animals, mountains and plains proclaim your glory. Help the work of ecologists to thrive as they teach us new ways to care for the environment and bring relief to areas recovering from natural disasters. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of justice, you call us to live as your beloved community throughout the world. Instill in local, regional, national, and global leaders a desire to work for the well-being of all people. We pray, as Jesus taught us, for our enemies and for those people we find hard to love. Reconcile us with them and grant us the peace that only you can bring. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of peace, we pray for all members of the military, first responders and their families. Defend them with your heavenly grace. Give them courage in the face of danger and continue to hold them close, Lord, wherever they may be. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you bring assurance when we are afraid. Bring calm to any who are anxious and, or fearful and bless the work of therapists, nurses, and other health care providers. Comfort all who grieve and soothe any who are sick, especially those on our prayer list and those whom we name now, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of wonder, you accompany us in both joys and sorrows. Make your presence known in our work and play, in lively conversation and in quiet rest. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you send people to renew both church and society. We give you thanks for their lives of faithful service and ask. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For what and for whom else do the people of God pray today? For the people who are dealing with unrelenting heat, for the people who are facing natural disasters wherever they may be, let your presence be with them, Lord, and let them feel your peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray, too, for the marigolds that are within our church today, both here on the altar and also in the social hall, because they are a sign to us that we are strong people who are, have inner faith. We'll learn more about those, but today we pray for the marigolds we have and the marigolds to come. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us share a sign of the Lord's peace. I hope you didn't mind my arthritis. Let us us pray. pray. Merciful Merciful God, God, everything everything in heaven heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. 
May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation, through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. indeed holy, gracious, and merciful God. Everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promise and presence which have sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. On the night in which he was handed over to a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus took bread he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come, come again. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we exclaim, Amen. Come, come, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all of your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. For those worshiping with us at home, this is the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
we stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray together. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our light and our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve in love. Thanks be to God.